Have you ever seen someone else make money on an opportunity that should have been you? I've been there as well. There's been many, many times where I've passed on a deal and then looked back and saw that somebody else made five, 10, 20, $30,000 on it. Especially in real estate, because all the competitors know each other and you can check the auditor data. So you can always go back and see who else made money on the deal when it wasn't you. Today, I'm gonna give you a full case study on a deal that I almost passed on, but we ended up making it work. This is Austin Rutherford, where we talk business, finance, and real estate. And while you're here, if you could hit that like button, smash that like button for me, please. I'm trying to get a video to go viral. It'd be greatly appreciated if this has added any value to you thus far. So I got this lead from one of our direct mail campaigns. There's a lot of investors out there right now talking about direct mail is dead. Now don't get me wrong, the response rate on direct mail from years ago to now is definitely way less, but direct mail is not dead. She actually called us and says she gets calls nonstop from cold callers but she doesn't want to deal with them because they just call her all day every day. So because we sent her a piece of drag mail is why she called us. And the cool thing with this deal is she owns over 30 other properties. So it might not just be this one deal. It won't just be this one deal. It's going to be many, many more. So drag mail is not dead. So she gave me a call. We built rapport, talked to her, learned about the property, the condition of the property, the tenant, everything in between. So I ended up asking her how much she wanted to sell the property for. She said $75,000. And right away, I already knew that that number basically worked. But if you take the first number that somebody says, they're going to think that they undersold the property and then they're going to have sellers regret. So any number that somebody says, even if it's a home run deal, make sure you hesitate because you don't want them to have seller's remorse in the future and then back out of the deal for those reasons. So she said 75,000. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make that happen. You know, let me talk to my business partner. If we can make that happen, is, you know, is this something you're comfortable with and ready to move forward with and sell? And then she started getting cold feet. She's like, well, you know, I don't really know. I gotta talk, I gotta think about it. And I pushed her, but she was like, no, I have to think about it. And if you push somebody too far, then they're not gonna like you because you're too pushy. So I pushed as far as I thought she should go. And then I was like, no worries, no worries. You know, I'll give you a call back tomorrow. So she thought about it overnight and then I called her back the next day. So she called me back and said she needed $80,000. She was like, look, I got a lot of people calling me. Other people are already offering $80,000. I don't know if they were already offering that or not, but I know that other people were definitely calling her. I was actually on the phone with her and her other phone was ringing from a cold caller. So I knew it was there, the competition is heavy. I knew that there was a very, very small chance that $80,000 would work because it's tenant occupied. So I already know the condition of the property. I know we need to go in there and do the kitchens, the bathrooms, the floors, the paint, things of that nature. But let's say, for example, we agreed to the 80,000, we walked through the property and the kitchens and bathrooms were already done, then $80,000 would have worked in this situation. But again, I knew that probably was not the case and it probably wouldn't work, but she hadn't been in the property for five plus years. So I figured we might as well give it a shot at the $80,000 and worst case, we get in there, we take pictures, and then we inform the seller of the actual condition, and then we can renegotiate the price if need be. So instead of walking away from the deal at 80,000, when I basically knew it didn't work, we decided to take a shot at it anyways. And I knew that she had some flexibility because she said $75,000 earlier. And when she said 75, I offered her 71 and she almost took it. So I knew there was some flexibility in there. But long story short, we put it in contract over the phone. We hired an inspector to go out and take pictures and do a walkthrough of the property. They sent us the report back. They sent us the pictures back. We reviewed the deal and it needed everything that we thought. The kitchen, the bathroom, the flooring, the paint, things of that nature. But the other thing that nobody knew about is it needed about $13,000 in foundation repairs in the basement. So it needed beams on every wall and it needed a French drain to a sump pump system put in. So now that we had that information, that was an additional cost that we were not aware of either. But we got really good contractors. We knew we could get it done for a few thousand dollars. But the estimate from a big contractor here in the city was $13,000 to repair it. So what did we do? We called the seller back. We're like, hey, Mr. Seller, you know, I know you haven't been in the property for five plus years. You know, I just wanted to inform you of a few things. We told her about the condition, the issues with the property. I let her know that, hey, you know, this is going to cost $13,000 to repair. She's like, oh. and I was like, but don't worry. We're not asking for $13,000 off the price, but we do need some flexibility seeing that there is an additional expense. Keep in mind, it's only going to cost us a few thousand but it would cost her 13,000 because we have the relationships that she doesn't. So she thought about it. She's like, where do we need to be? 
started lower and we ended up agreeing to $74,250, which is exactly where we needed it to make it work at the end of the day. So like I said, we got it back down to a price where it actually made sense, but I wanna dive into the numbers and show you exactly why it made sense numbers wise so you can learn how to analyze these types of deals. So here's our rental analyzer spreadsheet. So first off, you got to find out how much it would rent for. So I know a three bed, one bath in that area rents for about $1,100 per month. We got that from rentometer, rentometer.com and zillow.com by looking at other properties that are renting. Then we go to the auditor, we get the property taxes, we estimate the yearly insurance on the property, and then we put in the terms of our loan. So I know that we can get a 4% loan at 25 years, we might be able to get a 3.9, 3.8, but I'm gonna run it conservatively. And I know that the ARV of this property is $135,000. So you fill out the blue, this is a 25% down payment. So the bank will refi us at 75% loan to value. So once we buy this, renovate it, place a tenant inside of it and refinance it with a bank, the bank will give us a new loan of $104,625. So you look at this, we bought it for $74,250. The renovation is about 25 grand. The holding costs and closing costs is another five grand. So we're all in for 103,991, which is less than the new loan amount, meaning that we're gonna own this property with none of our money at the end of the day. But let's take, for example, we bought this at 80,000 instead of 74,000. You see how this is red now? It's because we're into this for $5,000 more than we're gonna get back at closing. So for this to be green, that's one of our processes of analyzing this deal. If it's green, it makes sense, but we need another one to be green as well. And it's the monthly profit, the monthly profit on the deal. So you take the $1,100 a month, you subtract your PITI, your principal interest taxes and insurance, and then it gives you $431. Now me, I have a property management company that runs these for us, which is this category right here. So after property management, we only make $343 per month, but I'm only focused on the high level numbers and I need to make at least $400 per month. So let's say this only rented for $1,000 a month. See how this is red now? It means we can't do it. So if both of these are green, which it is in this scenario, we're able to actually buy the deal. So instead of passing on this deal, again, when I originally basically knew that $80,000 would not work on this property, instead of walking away, which I've done in the past sometimes, we actually put the property in contract because it might have worked if everything was in great condition, and we got the property inspected, and then we used that inspection report and pictures to inform the seller of the actual condition of the property. Something that was in our favor on this deal is that the seller had not been in the property for over five years. So we were, I was comfortable with that, knowing that she had no idea of the condition, and we could inform her of the condition and hopefully get a lower purchase price, which we ended up doing. And the other big thing here, even if she didn't come off the price on this specific deal, I probably still would have bought it and put you know $5,000 of my own money into the deal because this seller has 30 other properties. I want all 30 of them, but you gotta close one before they start giving you access to the other ones. So I probably still would have done this deal at 80,000 if she didn't renegotiate, but she did because I wanted access to those additional properties. So at the end of the day, we went with it. The deal makes sense. I'm gonna own another rental property, which we make about $400 a month on with none of my own money. I'm gonna get the depreciation expense to not pay taxes. I'm gonna get the appreciation of the property. I'm gonna get the tenant buy down of the mortgage and I'm gonna get the cash flow at the end of the day. So I'm just adding another rental to my portfolio of almost 70 properties right now. The first property is always the hardest to get. Second, difficult. Third, difficult. Fourth, difficult. But once you get to 10 and 20 and 30, buying properties becomes easy. So I'm curious to see what your answer is. After seeing those numbers, is this a deal that you would buy? Comment below and let me know your thoughts why you would buy this or why you would not buy this. And while you're down there, make sure you hit that like button. Trying to get a video to go viral would be greatly appreciated if you could hit that like button and hit that subscribe button as well. As always, appreciate you being here. We'll see you on the next one.